In today's exciting step-by-step -step science video, we're going to do a little combination of physics and football. And these are the two things that we're going to try and do in this video. Um, so the first thing that we're going to try to do is hit the center circle from the five meter box. And the second thing we're going to try to do is hit the crossbar from the top of the center circle. All right, so we're going to go out first and try and do those two things, and then we'll come back in and explain the physics behind it. What do you think, Sam? Are you going to be able to hit the crossbar? Maybe, maybe not. Let's just see if I know. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's go. Mom, I don't like the buffer. Now we're going to try and find the initial velocity needed for the ball to go from the 5 meter box all the way to the center circle. Um, and in order to figure that out, we estimated roughly that the angle that we're going to be kicking the ball at is going to be 55 degrees. Um, and the distance between the 5 meter box and the center circle is going to be 45 meters. Um, so now we're going to try and find time. And since we know that the accelerate, that there's going to be no acceleration in the x-axis, we can then use this equation right here, which is the initial velocity in the x direction over distance, uh, distance divided by time. Um, so now we rearrange that equation, so we have time on this side. And then when we factor in these numbers here, the distance, which is 45 meters right here, um, and the, velo the initial velocity in the x direction is 0 0.574 times the initial velocity. And we actually got that through this up here, where we needed the cosine of this angle right here, 55 degrees, times the initial velocity was then this number here. So then when we simplify this equation down, then we get time equals 78.4 meters over the initial velocity. OK, now we're going to do part two of the problem where we're going to try and figure out what the initial velocity is needed to hit the center circle. As you saw in the first part, Sam determined the equation for the time. The time is going to be equal to, as we found over here, the time is equal to 78.4 meters divided by the initial velocity. Now, this is our kinematic equation that we're going to use to figure out the time. We have our time here and our time here. This is the time we're solving for. And this is the equation that says that the delta y, the change in the y, is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction times the time plus 1 half g, our acceleration times t squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation, this term right here, and we're going to substitute it into this equation right here for all of our time, for both of our times like that. OK? And then we're going to plug some of our other values in. For example here, the change in the y. Because the ball is being kicked and landing on the ground, the change in the y is 0 meters. So there's no change in the, in the height. And the initial velocity in the y direction we found, because we know from our trigonometric functions, that the initial velocity in the y direction is the sine of the, of the angle, which is 55 degrees, times the initial velocity. The sine of 55 is 0 0.819 times the initial velocity. And we can put that value in right here for our initial velocity. The time is the equation we had down here before, which says that 78.4 meters divided by the initial velocity plus, don't forget the plus signs, don't forget your minus signs, but here we have a plus sign, plus 1 half. Our acceleration in the y direction is minus 9,81 meters per second squared. In the y direction, there is acceleration. Over here in the x direction, remember, we had no acceleration. And then we have the time squared. And we're going to take our same term here, 78.4 divided by the initial velocity. Don't forget, you have to square that term. OK? So now, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this equation and get our initial velocity. OK, still. The initial velocity and uh, the change in the height in the y direction is zero. And the first thing that you can do is you can see you have initial velocity here in the top half of this equation and initial velocity in the bottom here. We can cancel those two initial velocities. And then what I did was I took 0 0.819 times 78.4, and I got 64.2 meters. OK, I'm going to try and put my units in here. It's a little interesting to see how the units work out. OK, now we have our plus sign, but this is a minus, so I brought the minus sign out in front here. 1 half of 
is 4.9, and that's meters per second squared. And then we're going to square 78.4. Square 78.4 is 6147, 6147 meters squared. And then we have the initial velocity down here, and the initial velocity has to be squared also. So please don't forget to, about your minus signs, and you're squaring both of those terms. Okay, now I'm going to do two things in the next step. I'm going to bring the 64 to the other side. So then we have minus 64.2 meters, and then I'm going to multiply 4.9 times 6147. And when I do that, I get 30,118. If you look at the units here, you get meters cubed over second squared, like that. Okay, and don't forget to, that you have the, the minus sign here, and then you have the initial velocity squared, like that. Okay? Now, we want to solve for the initial velocity, not the initial velocity squared. And as you know, I can just switch these two terms when I have it set up like this. So now, and I'm going to take the square root, so I have the initial velocity is equal to the square root of 30118, which I had over here, divided by 64.2, which I bring that down here. And then I can, if you will do that in just a second, of course, but you see the units are interesting here. This meter cancels with one of these, so now I'm squared. So I have meter squared, second squared. I take the square root of this, I take the square root of my units, and I end up with that. The initial velocity is 21.7 meters per second. That means if I have a launch angle of 55 degrees, I want the ball to go 40 meters to hit the center of the center circle, that I have to have an initial velocity. The ball has to have an initial velocity of 21.7 meters per second. We're going to find the initial velocity needed for problem number two. Problem number two, we're going to be calling hit the crossbar. We're in Berlin, Germany. The crossbar is called the Latte. So we want to figure out what the initial velocity needed is if we kick the ball at an angle of 40 degrees. And instead of landing on the ground, this time the ball is going to be landing at the Latte, excuse me, or the crossbar, which is at a height of 2.4 meters. So that's really the only difference between this problem and the previous problem. We know the angle. We know the distance, 41 meters, that's from the front of the center circle to the goal, and we know the goal has a height of 2.4 meters. So once again, we're gonna be finding a term for the time in the x direction so that we can substitute that value into our kinematic equation. Also, once again, we know that there is no acceleration in the x direction, so therefore, the acceleration, of course, zero meters per second squared. Therefore, we can use this regular equation, or simple equation, which says that the velocity is simply the distance divided by the time. The velocity in the x direction is the distance in the x direction divided by the time in the x direction. We can rearrange that equation so that we have the time is equal to the distance in the x direction divided by the initial velocity in the x direction. All we did is substitute, switch these two values. Okay, now we can plug our values in. We know that x is 41 meters, the distance from the front of the circle to the goal. And then the initial velocity in the x direction, we can get from our original diagram and our trigonometric functions when we deconstruct this vector. We know that the initial velocity in the x direction is the cosine of the angle times the initial velocity. That's the cosine of 40 degrees. The cosine of 40 degrees is 0.766 times the initial velocity. And we simply plug that value in or substitute that value in here for our initial velocity. Now we can simplify this equation one step further. If we just take 41 divided by 0 0.766 times the initial velocity, and we get that the time is therefore going to be equal to 53.5 meters divided by the initial velocity in the x direction. Okay? And or time divided by the initial velocity. Now, this is the term that we're going to substitute into our kinematic equation, and Sam's going to do that for us. We are going to substitute our t value into our kinematic equation above, um, which is delta y equals the initial velocity in the y direction times t plus one half gt squared. Um, so now if we substitute all the values in that we have gotten over the course of this problem, 
um, we can do 2.4, which is delta y, which is obviously the height of the goalpost, equals 0 0.643 times the initial velocity. And we actually figure that out by this trigonometric equation right here. We continue, we have t, which is right here, um, and then we add 1 half times minus 9.81 meters per second squared um, times t squared. Um, so the first thing that we can actually do here is we can cancel out the initial velocities here. Um, so this first half of this equation, which is 0 0.643 times the initial velocity times 53.5 meters over the initial velocity actually simplifies to 34.4 meters. Um, one half of 9.81 meters per second squared simplifies to negative 4.9 meters per second squared. Um, and 53.5 meters squared is 2,600, 2,862 meters squared over the velocity squared. Um, so now we have to subtract 34.4 on both sides. So we get negative 32 meters equals um, negative 14,023 over the initial velocity squared um, meters cubed per second squared. Um, so now if we round that all together, we have the initial velocity equals the square root of 14,023 meters cubed over second squared and 32 meters, which is right here. Um, and that comes out in the end to be 20.9 meters per second. Um, so in conclusion, we found out that if you kick a ball at a 40 degree angle, 41 meters away from the goal, and we want to hit the crossbar, the initial velocity of the ball will have to be 20.9 meters per second. Oh, right down the center!